uh, we've got with us Kiran Mazumdar Shaw, CMD of Biocon, who's joining in now to talk to us about the fact that Biocon has got Europe GMP not for Malaysian insulin facility. Morning, ma'am. Thanks for joining in. Uh, take us through more details of this because this facility was inspected recently and I believe you've got a clean sheet. Yes, uh, we, uh, you know, basically received this GMP certification from uh, the European regulatory authorities uh, and it pertains to a, a dossier pertaining to insulin glargine that we had uh, filed with EMA earlier. And uh, the uh, facilities were inspected uh, a few months ago, and uh, obviously we are pleased that we have got a CGMP certificate from them. Right. Um, Mr. Shaw, good morning. This is Piyush Jain. Uh, my question to you is, uh, for our viewers actually, who would be actually understanding less about the pharma, but then they would be interested in terms of how the stock is developing. The question here is, if, if a facility uh, is getting a clearance, and I'm talking about a Malaysian facility, which I think uh, uh, has got a clearance, what it implies now, does it imply that you will be able to actually um, sell actually uh, drugs from there, launch drugs from there? What now it may, uh, means for Biogon? Well, basically, as I mentioned, this pertains to our uh, regulatory dossier that is being reviewed by the European authorities. And, uh, you know, uh, as you know, GMP certification is part of the whole dossier review process. And once, uh, you know, the review process is over and if all goes well, then we should receive approval for our insulin glargine, which means that we will be able to start selling insulin glargine into the European market. Right. So if I'm understanding right, uh, that uh, the Malaysian facility could also help you actually in selling uh, uh, the Euro into the European market uh, from that facility. Again, what about the Asian markets, the Japanese markets, uh, which uh, you have been looking at with great interest? Um, what sort of development actually uh, could we expect uh, from that side? Well, the Japanese uh, market is being uh, addressed from the Indian facility, and uh, the Malaysian facility, which is much larger than the uh, Indian facility, obviously is uh, aimed to cater to a lot of the large market opportunities that we see, not just in Europe, U.S., and, of course, uh, other parts of the world. So, you know, we are looking at Latin America, Middle East, uh, Eastern European markets, and, and of course, Southeast Asian markets. As you know, we already uh, supply to Malaysia because we have an off-take agreement signed with the Malaysian government uh, for the supply of insulin and glargine. And, uh, you know, basically, we are also uh, looking at uh, supplying other markets from Malaysia. So Malaysia is going to be, uh, you know, a very important uh, insulin facility for us. Right. Uh, Michelle, actually, the way you are saying it uh, sounds to be very important from the revenue perspective also. Uh, could you just help me in understanding, maybe uh, sometime down the line, I'm not uh, uh, questioning about uh, how much it's near time, but I'm asking about what sort of revenue opportunity now it could imply in the next 12 months or <clears throat> as and when actually you're going to start selling, um, how much the Malaysian facility could start contributing? Well, you know, um, I won't be able to sort of basically categorically give you any uh, revenues in the next 12 months, but certainly uh, in the near future, we expect, uh, you know, the Malaysian facility to be able to cater to very large, uh, you know, market opportunities that we have globally. And, uh, you know, the market that we are actually addressing is a market that is almost, uh, you know, $20 billion in size. And even if you were to take, uh, you know, a, a biosimilar pricing, uh, which will obviously mean a, it will not be the entire market, it can still be a very sizable opportunity for us from Malaysia. Right. Uh, Mishra, then uh, uh, help us also understand some of the progress on the Trastuzumab. Uh, that's our drug, which, as we know, uh, you still have about three months for, from the US FDA. Uh, what sort of progress in your own uh, internal estimates, uh, basically, uh, you believe that uh, has been made or uh, some sort of uh, guidelines or some sort of idea um, around that also, please? Well, 
the three month uh, you know extension that the US FDA basically has informed us about is really about a review process pertaining to our uh, CMC part of the dossier and i think uh, you know as far as uh, we know we are you know obviously uh, uh, responding to all their uh, clarificatory questions that they have raised and hopefully it will be on track to you know be uh, for the review to be completed in this 3 month extension time frame right so uh, mishra like uh, my la last two questions in particular is one actually as you said that uh, it's hard to actually say on the revenue uh, perspective what sort of revenue accretion could happen uh, from the facility uh, but in, in your own internal uh, assessment uh, uh, because the Malaysian facility getting uh, the clearance and also it's the first fa uh, first facility or the first time clearance uh, which is coming sounds very important. Also, the European market is very big as you are saying. Uh, but for a stock actually uh, from uh, in terms of the earnings perspective, uh, some sort of growth, uh, if I'm not talking about a ballpark number, then some sort of revenue growth, if you give us an idea, that should be very helpful for the investors. Yeah, so like I said, you know, the addressable market that we're looking at is obviously a multi-billion dollar opportunity for Biocon. And, you know, as we get our regulatory approvals, we hope that this will become a very important and sizable, um, you know, billion-plus dollar opportunity uh, for revenues from, uh, from uh, Malaysia. Right. Mr. Uh, my, my last question to you is uh, regarding, uh, we're talking about the, the biosimilar Herceptin, uh, the same drug, uh, where actually a lot of filings, they actually had been done by other companies also. And this, uh, somehow we touched upon this topic last time also when we interacted with you. But uh, is there any progress which is being made by the other companies? And I'm, I'm trying to ask you because there is a timeline gap here. So are you actually really concerned about other companies like Samsung, Celtrion? It appears Samsung, I think, uh, has withdrawn, has delayed, but Celtrion, Amgen, uh, those companies which actually had gone ahead and filed uh, for the similar drug, similar biosimilar, is there any concern around the progress which is being made by them and if they are going to launch it later, uh, the timeline is quite far, but if they are going to launch it later, uh, what sort of progress are you hearing uh, about the other companies? Well, obviously, you know, we are aware of uh, various other uh, companies that are also developing the same you know, the same molecule. And uh, we, of course, uh, on our part, are going to concentrate on really, you know, crossing the finishing line as soon as possible. So I think our focus is really on making sure that we, uh, you know, keep on track in terms of meeting all the regulatory requirements. So, you know, we would really like to stay focused on what we are trying to do. And, of course, we will... Uh, you know, keep tabs on what uh, other companies are uh, doing in terms of what the public domain information makes available. But I think more than, uh, you know, getting concerned about what others are doing, I think it's extremely important for us to remain focused. Well, thanks for that, Kiran, and of course, uh, good luck with work going ahead. Uh, well, on that note, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, we'll talk to our analysts who will be joining in on the show as we gear here for market opening. Five minutes to go as we head to pre-open. <laughs>